So what we have today is the practical aspects of Profibus, Profinet, and IO Link. And we've got members giving talks, and we've also got eight members with stands around the room as well. So my name's Derek Lane. I'm the Product Manager for Automation for Vargo, and until recently was the Vice Chairman of the group. And that was for probably just over 20 years. So I've been a member for 25 years now. I'm retiring next year, so I stood down, and the committee has voted Peter, so Peter Thomas is now the vice chairman. So I'll be handing over to Peter just now. So officially now, Peter um, from the AGM is vice chairman of the organization. So we'd like to go through a few points, and oh, that's compressed as well. So right, we've already mentioned that uh, this has actually been filmed, so just be wary for that. So this is a technical focused seminar, and the content varies from seminar to seminar on the feedback. So again, this is important. Please give feedback um, after the event. We've got some stickers on here with the actual address that's on there. Hopefully, Bob's going to send out emails to everybody so that you'll have that. If you fill out that, you will then uh, be um, eligible for the slides. And also, you'll be able to see the videos as well as a reference on there. There isn't any fire alarm today, so there's no practices. So if it does go off, we need to go out. The far door there goes straight into the car park, so please use the fire exit at the back. Just follow us. We'll move quickly. Toilets, if you go back out the door here into the museum and bear to the left, the toilets are out there. So a little bit of a route march, but that's where the toilets are. No smoking. It's a no smoking building. Uh, somebody took the cigarette end under some oily rags in 2018 and four of these halls burned down, so I don't think they want that to happen again. Please set your phones at silent, so I've got mine, and that certainly isn't, so please put them into silent mode. Can't do that when you get the chance. And we will be serving lunch at 13.05. So the buffet, we said at the rear of the room, it isn't exactly the side of the room. We were going to call people forward, but I think the way it is, just please you know, have a, a, an orderly queue for that. And the online feedback, the address is there for that, but we do have some stickers on there, and hopefully Bob's going to send it out. So it is important to get your feedback. That will help us a lot for future events. So COVID, unfortunately, we've got the situation on here. So the room was thoroughly cleaned before this event. And we changed the room as well to a larger room to give more space. As it happens, there's not as many people here. But um, you know we've got plenty of space on there. And please use it. The food and refreshments will be called when we're ready. But don't worry about that. Just do not. Um, Bunch up, just give plenty of space, and please be you know, wary of people in front. The catering staff will be wearing masks and gloves. That's been at the bequest of some people who's actually you know, replied to some of Bob's emails on there. So please respect others, and we recommend these following guidelines. Wear a face covering when moving around. I don't think many of us are. Maintain a reasonable social distance, and regular use of hand sanitizers provided. So most of the stands you'll see, there is hand sanitizer. So please be aware and use that. And food and refreshments, we'll call out when it's ready. And the catering staff will be wearing masks and gloves. So this, I'm afraid, isn't very clear, but the agenda itself on there. So I'm going to have to put my glasses on to read it here. So 9 o'clock we've got until 9.35 for the welcome. So that's split between myself and Peter Thomas. 9.35 to 10.20, we've got Industry 4 and in the Industrial Internet of Things. That's myself. We will then have a coffee break and time for you to look around the exhibition. So please make certain you do go around and talk to the exhibitors. It's very important that. And they've got things to show. And we'll have an introduction before we kick off on what's available on there. Then at 10.50 to 11.35, we've got the Network Gateway Technology by Peter Thomas. And 11.35 to 12.20, we've got the Profinet Network Design. That's Andy Williams of Siemens. 12.20 to 13.05, Industrial Networking, Commissioning and Testing with Dave Tomlin of Hitex. We've got a, a nice break of 13.05 to 14.00 for lunch. And again, the opportunity to look around the exhibition itself and talk to the exhibitors, please. 
So 2 o'clock to 2.30, Profibus and Profinet device configuration tools. That's Phil Water with uh, Avengers and Hauser. 1430 to 1500, distance learning, how to get Profibus or Profinet certified remotely. That'll be Peter Thomas. Then we have 1500 to 1530, and that's going to be an update on Ethernet, a very important part and a new part, which is going to be the advanced physical layer, again, by Phil Waterworth of Anderson Hauser. I'll touch a little bit on that in my presentation as well. We will have a coffee break. This has been added in there. Um, so what we have is from 1535 to 1545, we've got 10 minutes, have a quick coffee, refreshment, last chance to see the exhibits, and then it's a matter of um, a quick intro and a look around the museum with the museum director later on. Lots of exhibits to see, lots of interest in there, so some nice things to look at. Lots of heritage on there. So PI's technologies, so PI, we go as PI UK. So the PI is actually Profibus and Profinet International. So I suppose it should be PPI, but PI is for Profibus and Profinet. Profibus came first, Profinet followed later on. So the technologies that's looked after is Profibus. So this is certainly when it comes to you know, RS485 type of technology, the leading technology worldwide. Things moved over to Ethernet in the early days. That was a bit of a no-no because of IT and IT and controls just didn't come together. So most of the leading protocols are now on Profinet, and you'll learn more about that later on. IO Link isn't a field bus, it's a communication standard, but that's important for us at the bottom end. And Omlox, Omlox is an unusual one, you may not have heard about it, and it's to do with location. This could be people, but predominantly it's product. So within a plant with Wi-Fi and stuff on there, you can physically track where things are so they don't get lost. So that's an important part on there. So PI as a group are looking after those. For a short while, they actually looked after Interbus S, but that's more or less died and gone by the by these days. So we do have different categories of membership, just to bring this into light here. So we've got university membership, that's free of charge. So we've got the um, capability where you can get information off the web for anybody at university, a student or academics on there. We've also got the user membership, which is going to be anybody using products or end customers. That's a £600 per year um, membership fee. We have the supplier membership, so that's distributors and integrators, consultants. That's doing work with Profibus and Profinet. That's £1,000 a year membership. We've got the vendor membership, which is going to be a manufacturer, and that's £2,000. And senior members, there's a few of us on there, where we pay an additional £2,600, and that automatically gets you onto the steering committee. So there's different levels on there. Anybody's interested, drop uh, Bob Skrull a line on there, and we'll sign you up. This is going to be Pete. Right, I'm just going to hand over to Peter now. OK, good morning. Uh, my name is Peter Thomas. Uh, I'm just going to say a couple of words uh, here concerning PI at the international level. As Derek said, now that Derek's retiring, I'm taking over his role as the deputy chairman of PI UK. But I have a role within PI at the international level, that being the chairman of the training centres working group. And basically, we're responsible for defining the learning outcomes of all of the certified Profibus and Profinet engineering courses. You can see that PI um, at a regional level is represented by 24 regional associations, of which we are one of them, PI UK are one of them. And then below them sit a number of individual organisations. We have competency centres. These are people uh, accredited to give technical support on Profibus and Profinet. We have training centres. These are the guys that are certified to give the certified training courses. And we also have test labs. And the idea of test labs is that during the training, we always encourage end users to make sure that they are always using certified devices. And what certified devices are is where the test lab takes an example of a given product, puts it on a, t a test rig, and then basically does a fit for purpose. He checks that this guy doesn't adversely affect other bits of equipment, and the other bits of equipment don't adversely affect it. 
and end users have always told look for certified devices. As you can see now, although PI started uh, really fronting Profibus and developing Profibus, they then went on to uh, the industrial Ethernet arena and came up with Profinet. And then they're moving uh, uh, downwards and sideways in terms of IO Link and Omlocks, as um, uh, Derek has just said. Just wanted to show you a couple of slides because this tells quite a lot. Uh, on an annual basis, PI try to keep a track on where things are going with the two um, uh, leading um, technologies, Profibus and Profinet, from their point of view. This is basically showing that as of last year, there was getting on for 70 million Profibus devices out there on a global basis. If we look at Profinet, which came about maybe 10, 15 years ago. That's some way down, 42 million. But this tells quite a story in that if you are a device manufacturer planning your budget for the next five, 10 years, where do you think people are going to be putting their money? And it's fairly obvious that there's going to be, it looks like Profinet is taking off and Profibus globally is, is flatlining. And that generally is, is the case. And when I go around on site for site support visits, then I would say if I go to um, logistics companies, Ocado, Amazon, companies like that, if I go to baggage handling at airports, if I go to automotive industry, it's predominantly industrial ethernet. If they use Profibus, it was at some time ago. If I go to the water industry, if I go to the chemical industry, the process industry, that is predominantly Profibus and will remain so for some time. But those guys have got a bit of a problem because of the availability of spares over time. I'm not talking of the next few months, but I'm talking over the next few years. The writing is on the wall that these people will eventually have to move over to some other kind of technology. So basically, Profinet in our particular case. In terms of getting certified for these technologies, then basically, as you can see here, you can become a certified Profibus and Profinet installer. And that's not just aimed at the guys pulling the cables. It's basically anybody that needs to know what the fundamental issues are with regards to Profibus and Profinet at a physical level. We can then go to a, a much higher level at the engineer where people can understand the protocol and also fault find to that particular level. And there is also a Profibus system designer. We do a commissioning and maintenance for those people that don't want to go all the way down to the engineer and they just want to understand how to audit a Profibus or Profinet network. And then PI UK can uh, arrange for developer training for any organisations that want to develop um, Profinet devices. At the moment, then, in terms of the training, it can be done on site at the premises of a company, or we also run it at the training centre of Enderson Hauser in Manchester on a regular basis. And there's a link here uh, that, uh, uh, where you can find details of the dates themselves. A couple of things just briefly to talk about in terms of next year. Um, there's going to be, we're going to be offering all of the certified training courses um, in an online format. PI were very keen on putting this lot online and it, for the last year we've been having meetings with international, other uh, international training centres and uh, we in the UK have been given the authority to do that so if this is something of interest to you then just find me during the day and I'll give you a bit more information but I am going to give a short presentation later on anyway. And finally, one of the things that is coming along is what's called Profinet PA. And some of you might have known this as the APL, the Advanced Physical Layer. It's basically a way of bringing uh, industrial instrumentation, what would typically Profibus PA, into the industrial Ethernet uh, arena. And I suspect that if the, the pandemic hadn't happened, you'd have been buying these now. But my understanding is now that you're going to be able to buy these kind of things from about quarter two, uh, quarter two of next year. And in line with that, we're currently developing a certified Profinet PA engineer course. So that's all I wanted to say for now. Um, what I'm going to do now is uh, ask Derek just to invite the, uh, uh, the um, uh, exhibitors here, just for them to say a couple of things about their uh, products, etc. So if it is uh, your thing, you can go around and have a chat with them. Thanks. 
Thank you, Peter. So you missed that one off, what we got? Yeah. So, uh, just one thing, I don't need the mic, that was it. Yeah, just one thing, uh, you, you'll notice You'll notice we've got a video camera at the back. Uh, if you need to get up, if you could just try to remember to walk around the side. We, I know it's difficult. Don't worry, we won't shoot you if you do. But uh, that's what we've been asked to uh, see if you can uh, do your best. Anyway, thank you. you want to hand that to the guys? Yeah. So when I call your names out for the exhibitors, can you come down towards Peter, please? There's a microphone there. And uh, actually, if you, you come and stand here, you can give an overview of your products. Peter, so so that was still part of your oh, presentation. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, it is worth, worth mentioning that. Sorry about that. I, I only added that this morning. Yeah, PI uh, take, took a decision in 20, uh, uh, September, and they were a little bit microphones. Sorry. Sorry. Pick it up. Yeah. Sorry. PI uh, took a decision in September of this year. They were concerned about the growing list of certified people on their website, where a lot of these had been certified 10, 15, sometimes 20 years ago. Um, and they took the decision in line with the PI group and said that from September, anybody that was certified five or more years ago would be removed from that web list. It doesn't invalidate the certificate certification, if you were certified six, seven years ago, your certificate is still valid, but you won't appear on the website for traceability point of view. The idea is, is that we as a, a, a training center working group are going to come up with the format for refresher training. And if you, if it's particularly important for you or your colleagues to get back on that list, then you'll be asked to take a refresher course and you will be given a new PI certificate with the date of that time and you'll be back on there for five years. Just to add to that a little bit, um, we've got members like you, you, the water industry, they've been fighting for a while for this. After three years, people should be recertified. So it's been a bit of a battle, but PI's agreed to be five years. So it is important that people keep up to get up to date with the technologies, the way they change. Right, so what we have is at Exhibitors, there's one of these not gonna be turned up by the looks of that then. So we'll just go through in sequence. Right, AGM, Sandy Moss. You the guys, if you could tend to come towards this side then so we don't have the wait for the long walk. Good morning, my name's Andy Moss from AJM Engineering. Where we provide software solutions using Tier Portal and we've sort of expanded to uh, using Code Assist, but we also provide hardware solutions as well. So we cover everything from IO solutions, Ethernet switches, PLCs, and HMIs. So we look forward to seeing you guys later. Thank you. Just pass it on, please, Andy. Yep. So, Belcom, yep. Paul Lomas. Yeah, good morning, everybody. As Eric says, my name's Paul Lomas. Uh, just like to give you a short introduction to Belcom Cables. Uh, we're a specialist cable distributor based close to. Closer. Close enough, yeah. Is that better? Is that one? Yeah, we're based close to Stansted Airport in Essex. Um, we're senior members of PI, and I, I reckon that we stock the, the, the biggest range of Profibus and Profinet cables in the UK today. Got a short, um, got a stand at the back with some, dis with some sample cables on, and hopefully sometime during the day you'll get over to see us and we can have a chat. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. So Andrews and Hauser, Phil Waterworth. Testing, testing. That one's all right. It was this one. You've got to be close. OK. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Phil Waterworth from Andrews and Hauser. Uh, Andrews and Hauser were known as a, an instrumentation manufacturer for the process industries. Uh, we also do lab-based measurements as well. But we also offer services in these process industries. We're solution partners for people as well. Um, so we're, we've got a stand at the back today where we're showing some of our uh, tooling from a, uh, 
uh, device configuration point of view across networks and some of our cloud-based offerings uh, in the world of IIoT. So come and, come and talk to us. Um, we don't just do instruments. We've got some other things at the back we're showing you as well. And I'll also see you later for some, for some discussions as well. Thank you, okay. Phil. So Fortress, new members, so Kelly Denson, please. I don't think I need a mic, but <laughs> definitely. So I'm they're, they're picking it off that, okay. so we do need So it's Kelly Dents, and I'm the business development manager at Fortress Interlocks, um, now Fortress Safety. So we originated with track key interlocks that you may or may not know, um, and then we moved into electromechanical interlocking, and in the last, I want to say, five, six mm. years, we've come into the Profi, Profi Net, Profi Safe uh, arena. We've got safety interlocks, and we've got some control IO as well. But some of our new technologies, including RFID access uh, network keys, and also some RFID safety keys that are all over on our stand for you to come and have a look at. Thank, Thank you, you, Kelly. Dave Tomlin of Hitex. Good morning, I'm Dave Tomlin um, from Hitex. Uh, we have a range of products, um, acceptance test, diagnostics, monitoring, but our main focus these days is really on um, connecting things to things. So if you want to connect a 1990s CNC to the Internet of Things, then we have methods of doing that. You want to connect a Rockwell PLC to a Siemens PLC, they don't talk natively nicely to each other. So we've got a, another bit of software or hardware to do that. Anything along those lines, that's where, where we're at. Thank you, Dave. Phil Gray, HMS. Good morning, everyone. My name's Phil Gray. I work for HMS. We are a leading ICT company. Uh, we deal in network communication predominantly, also in remote access and remote data. So we have uh, four main brands in our organization. We have our Anybus brand, where we deal in either embedded network technology or a range of gateways. We have our E1 brand, where we deal with remote access and remote data. We have our Intersys brand, which is predominantly building automation. And then finally, we have our Ixat brand, which specializes in CAN automation, predominantly for the automotive industry. So if you want to know anything more, please come and see us later. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Peter wants to uh, say a few words about ProSendic. Yeah. Yeah, um, basically, unfortunately, ProSentech have had to uh, pull out at the last minute. Um, maybe you should change that again. There we go. Yeah, had to pull out at the last minute from a, a non COVID illness, I'll add. Um, and basically, uh, Sean Ogborn is the UK sales manager that you can contact. But if you have got any technical queries about ProSentech products in terms of Profitrace, Atlas, Mercury, etc., you can come and see myself or also Chris here uh, is also conversant with uh, the ProSentech range of products as well. Thank you, Peter. I'm there. So, Vargo, uh, that's myself, Derek Lane. So we're up in the corner over there. So Vargo um, is probably better known for our Springforce terminals. So it's always been the technology being screwless. We brought out IO in 1995. We revolutionized the industry by bringing out a modular approach and also supporting major field buses. And of course, Profibus has always been one of the major field buses, especially in Germany, but it is worldwide. And of course, with Profinet as well. So we have a range of products. We've got I.O. products, IP20, IP67, as well as industrial switches. So please take some time to come and chat to myself and Connor later on. And we've got a working rig up there as well. So there is live product on there. But it's safe. Don't worry about that. It's all uh, IP20 and sti stickers on there. So no problems whatsoever. So I think that's it for the exhibitors.